Hey guys, welcome to this new video. In this video here, we're going to see how we can do optic detection on an African wildlife data set. So we have four classes in our data set. We both have a buffalo, elephant, rhino, and a zebra. I'm going to show you how we can do everything from scratch. We're going to open up a new Google Colab notebook, run you through each individual step. So how can we take the data set directly from Autolytics and also train them inside a custom Google Colab notebook? We're going to do both training, validation, and inference at the end. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation and see where we can find the data set that we're going to train a custom update detection model on. At the top, we can go inside this data set view. We have all the different types of data sets. We have both detection, update detection, segmentation, post estimation, and also classification. Right now, we're going to go with update detection. All these data sets that you can see on the left will be available directly with Autolytics. We just need to specify the data YAML file and that's pretty much it. It will download automatically to your computer. It will take all the classes, the data set, divide it into a train validation and test set and you can train your custom models directly on that. So if we just scroll a bit further down, we can see we have this African wildlife data set. Let's just go inside of it. We have 1000 images in our training set, 225 in our validation set and pretty much the exact same one for our testing set. We can read about the applications here, read a short description, but let's just go down to the data YAML file. So this is the structure that we're using with Autolytics to set up your whole data set. So you can train your models with just a few commands or a few lines of code. So the first thing that we need to specify is the path. So this is the data set root directory to our data set. Then we have our train validation and test split, and we just have our train slash images, the exact same thing for train validation and test. Then we need to specify our classes with the name. So a class zero will be a buffalo, class one elephant, two rhino, and the third one is a zebra. We also have to download script and URL down here at the bottom. So if you're running this for the first time, it will automatically download to your computer. So this is pretty much everything that we need. Then we just specify this African dash wildlife dot YAML directly inside of our commands or in our code. And we can start training on that. If we scroll a bit further down, we can then see the users. So this is exactly what I just talked about. We both have it in that Python and also directly in the command line. Here we can see some sample images and also annotations. So we just have a bunch of different images from Africa with wildlife animals, so elephant, rhino, and all of these types of animals. We can train a custom model on it. Then we can have a webcam, throw a video stream through it, detect all of these different types of classes. So that's pretty much it. We're going to use a YOLO V8 model and you can find all the models directly inside this model tab. These are all the ones available with Autolytics directly. And we have videos covering pretty much all of it, the different tasks, modes, models, data sets, and everything. So this is pretty much just how we can use it. This is the model that we're going to use. But let's now jump inside a Google Colab notebook all the way from scratch. So I've just created a new one. Let's go back into our data set again for our African wildlife. There we go. And then we can just take our African wildlife YAML file. So this is the new Google Colab notebook all the way from scratch. I've just set it up. First of all, when we're training our custom machine learning AI models inside a Google Colab notebook, we can use their free GPUs. So you don't need to take care of that. It is pretty easy and simple to work with. We just need to change our runtime type. Here, Python 3, we can use CPU, GPU, and this is the free one available. If you have a pro version, you can also use some of the other GPUs here and it will just speed up the process, but it will still only take 10, 20 minutes to train a custom ULV8 model with Ultralytics. So right now I'm going to specify the GPU and we can connect to the runtime. And that's pretty much it. We now have an environment with a GPU. We need to pip install Autolytics and we're good to go. First of all here, when we start our new notebook, we just call this command NVIDIA SMI to make sure that we're connected to the GPU and we can see some specs about our GPU as well. So now we can see that we have our Tesla T4 and we have around 15 gigabytes of um, RAM here for our GPU. So that's pretty much it. Let's now go down and pip install Autolytics. So this is everything that we need to do. And when we're using a Google Colab notebook, PyTorch, all the other dependencies and modules are already pre-installed, but here we just need to pip install Ultralytics. There we go. It should just take a couple of seconds and we should be good to go. Let's now go down and just take this use it example. You can both use it in Python. It doesn't really matter. It's still only two or three lines of code that you need to specify or the command line directly. Let's just take the command line here so you guys can see how you can also run command line 
commands inside a Google Colab notebook. So we can just use this explanation mark to tell it that we want to run this command just as we would in a command line interface. If you don't specify anything, it's just going to run Python code. So that's it. You can just copy paste the examples directly. Right now, I'm just going to change this to 30 epochs. We don't want to train for too long. You can specify the image size and also all the other arguments directly in here. The most important thing is that we specify this African wildlife YAML file and it's going to take care of all of it. Right now, let's just go with the small model. This is how easy it is to swap between the different Yolvi 8 models. So we have small, medium, nano, and so on. Let's just go with the small for now. So if we just go inside our documentation again and go inside the mode, we can then go down to our train view. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see all the different types of training settings that we can set. So the model, data, epoch. So these are primers that are specifying inside the Google Colab notebook right now. And just start out with just using the default parameters. You can always choose them later on, but we choose some pretty good high parameters automatically with Ultralytics. So you can see we have all these different types of parameters and settings that you can set and even like augmentation setting and hybrid parameters. So let's just jump back again and see how we can actually train it with the default parameters. We can also specify the batch size. So you might need to change that. So we can just specify batch equal to eight. And we can see if we go inside the documentation, let's just find the batch just to walk you guys through the whole process, how we would act like set it up ourselves, going back and forth between the documentation and code. So here we can see we have the batch as default, it is 16, but sometimes with the GPUs and the free GPUs in Google Colab, we might run out of memory if we're using 16. So let's just go with eight for now. We're pretty much ready to go. So let's run the command and see if it downloads the data set automatically, which it should in just a second. There we go. So first of all, it downloads the Yolovi 8 small model. If you scroll a bit further down, data set, African wildlife YAML, images not found, missing path. And then we can just see it downloads it automatically from the Ultralytics dataset registry. And you can do the exact same thing with all the other datasets that are showed you inside the documentation on the left side. We can see a summary of the model. It will set up all the different training parameters. We have our training set with 1000 images and 225 in our validation set. And we're using that to validate our model. And we're going to take a look at that once it's done training. So right now the training has pretty much started. I just went in took the data set directly, and then we need to run a single command inside a Google Colab notebook. We have GPUs, we have our whole environment, and we're training a custom ULV8 model with Ultralytics. So now we can see that the model has started training. We're at epoch one. We can see all the losses, our mean error positions, once we get our validation data, size instances, and also all our losses. So our first epoch here took around 30 seconds. So if you just multiply that with 30, it will take around 15 minutes to train our custom ULV8 model on 1000 images. And right now we can just take a look at the mean error position. It starts at a pretty high value, so 0 0.75 and also the mean error position of 0 0.50 to 0 0.95. It is also still pretty good. Just starting out with a pre-trained model and then we fine tune it. We just make some small adjustments to the weights when we're fine tuning it our model for our specific data set so we can detect our own classes. Epoch one, epoch two, we can already see that right now it's just fluctuating a bit here in the start, but it will start to converge over time. And ideally these values should go towards one. So let's just let it run here. Let's get back to it once it's done training and take a look at the results, do validation and also inference. So model is now done training for third epochs. As you remember, we pretty much started up here at the top. So let's just go a bit further up. We want our accuracies, our mean error position to increase and our losses to decrease. So here we see at the start here, we were around like 0 0.60, 0 0.70, where we ended up here at around 0.94. So that's a very high mean error position and also pretty good for the second one. So our precision and recall is also pretty much here at around 0.90. So those are also some good values. Our losses, they also decreased over time. So if it's going a bit further down, once it's done training, it's going to save the results into this runs directory, and then it will also do validation. So it's going to validate the best model, as you can see here, it's going to run through our validation set. We can see all the instances, all our images in our validation set and see the precision recall for each individual class. It's good to go in and validate your model after it's done training to see if there are some drift, some problems with some of the classes and so on, especially if you have way more classes just compared to four here. So yeah, we can go in and see all the classes are pretty much even could also be because if you have some class imbalances in your data set, you can check 
all of that as well, especially if you're using the Ultralytics hub. So we see the mean positions, pretty much the same around 0.95. Precision recall is also pretty much on point. We can see that the Rhino here is actually like significant compared to the other ones, where the other ones are pretty similar, at least for the recall here for the Rhino. So we can also see the entrance speed at the bottom. So it's around five milliseconds per image. So that's almost 200 frames per second running on this T4 GPU. If we go inside our directory to the left, we have a run folder with our detection, train, weights, and then we can extract the best weights and also the latest epoch. Probably just go with the best one here. You can then use it in your own custom applications and projects. We can see all the training graphs, metrics, F1 curve, precision recall curve. That is also pretty good to take a look at. We can also see all the graphs. So ideally we want all of our values to be up here in the top right corner to be close to one and we can see it for the individual classes as well. So these are some pretty good results. We have a good model that we can then use to detect this African wildlife case. If we go over to the left, we also have a confusion matrix that is also very good to look at, especially if we have multiple classes. We want ideally to have all the values in the diagonal because we have our true values down here. So this is our ground truth data and then we have our predicted values. So these are false predictions that we can see over here. So we can see we have some problems with the elephant where it predicted an elephant, but it was act like the background could probably sort it by using different threshold values, test that out when you're using it in your own projects and applications. But it looks pretty good. Most of the values are in the diagonal and close to 100. So that's good. We can also go and see all the different kind of like um, results. So we can take a look at the results. We both have a CSV file and also a PNG. So these are the training training results. We have our losses, they're decreasing, hasn't fully converged yet. So we could probably have trained it for 40 or 50 epochs. So we can see that mean our positions are starting to converge off, but still not fully. Could probably train it for a couple more epochs and go in and resume the training. You can just take the weights again, throw it into the model, create a new instance of it, and we're good to go. But these are some very good training results that we got and we also validated our model. If we go over here, we can also see a validation batch, both our labels and our predictions. So these are actually like predictions that the model hasn't seen before. It was not trained on these images. This is from our validation set that we're then doing predictions on top of. And we can see it is pretty much spot on here. Even though we have some here overlapping, we can detect the rhino and elephant in the background. So that is pretty good. We have zebras, buffalo, buffalo, rhino. So it does a pretty good job. Right now we have a batch of images to be able to use our model. We can then go down and create an instance of it. If we go inside our documentation again, and we can go down into our predict function. First of all, we need to create an instance of our model, but if we scroll a bit further down, we can then just take this code snippet. I'm going to copy it directly in here. So we were running the command line before. Now we're running Python code. Let's just make this a bit smaller. There we go. And now we can just take a single image a batch of images, full of images, different video sources. You can throw in a YouTube URL, pretty much everything. You can throw it in here. So right now, let's go in and grab one of the data sets, African wildlife. Let's take a test image inside the, our images. We're just going to take an arbitrary one. We copy the path. Now we just need to specify it in here. There we go. And we can also say that we want to save our results. So set that equal to true. You can specify all the different kind of parameters in here. Confidence score, intersection over union, depending on the task that you're using and so on. Here we can see all the sources, image, URL, screenshot, PLL, OpenCV, NumPy. We have videos for all of that. And also our inference arguments, confidence score, intersection over union, image size, half precision, the device that we want to run inference on. So this is how easy it is to use. We both train it, validate it, and now we do inference. So this is the exact same thing that you want to do if you're running this in real time with your webcam in OpenCV, custom Python script, whatever you're doing, we can just do it in the exact same way here. You get your results generator out as an output, and then you can extract the individual bounding boxes, all the information about our predictions, classes, confidence scores, X, Y values for uh, bounding boxes, top left corner, bottom right corner. We can visualize them, use it for optic tracking. We can draw the bounding boxes, labels, classes, and also just use it to control our applications and projects. So right now we should be good to go. I just need the last thing here. It is to go inside the weights. We take the best weight file, we copy the path, replace it in here, and we're good to go. So right now, let me just create an instance of the model first and do this in two code blocks. 
I'm going to run this one. It's going to create an instance of our new custom train model on this African wildlife data set. And now we have a second code block where we just throw in and do inference. We should just be able to run it here and we're going to save the results as well. So right now, 100 milliseconds inference is going to run faster when we process it multiple times. We can see we detected one buffalo, 100 milliseconds. You can see the uh, image shape here as well. And we have saved the results into runs, detect, predict. But you can also go in and extract the results directly from this results generator. You can find all that information in the other videos that we have on the channel and in the autolytics documentation. So if we just go inside, we then get a new folder, detect, predict. Let's go inside that one. And now we can open up this predict image. This is the exact image that we just threw in, in here. So we have this uh, 128. We have a buffalo with 94% confidence score so that is pretty good let's just try one more example test set and then we're going to take a look at it just so you guys can see that i'm cheating so we have this one here let's try to find one where we have multiple detections in it there we go here we have two let's take this one so i'm going to copy paste the path you can use numpy array pretty much any source i'm going to replace it there we go let's run the inference we get the results it's saved inside our predict folder again you need to update this and we have the exact image with our predictions. So here we have two buffaloes, 95% confidence score and 97% confidence score. So this is how easy it is to train a custom ULV8 model on this African wildlife data set. You can use your own data set. We have tons of videos with that as well or all the data sets that we have from Autolytics directly. Validate your model, train it, do and friends use it in your own applications and projects. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you learned a ton. Definitely go in and check this out. With just a few lines of code, use a Google Colab notebook for free GPU resources as well. You have the whole computer vision, Python out of running, you can use it in your own applications and projects. So I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.